Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin Wassalatu wassalamu ala syarafil anbiya Ibn Mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Alhamdulillah With the grace, mercy, love and permission of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala bi'iznillah We continue our da'wah work Through Post Islamic Psychology Center And Khalifa Education Foundation To transform the ummah in the 21st century where we have uh, many of our YouTube channel that you can go through. This is our database. Uh, this is where we, we try to put more than 700 videos on various aspects of uh, being a Caliph of Allah on this earth. And we are giving you free life coach training program through Islamic coaching, Islamic motivation, coaching, mentoring, and so on. So there are more than 700 videos through the YouTube. Then go to our website and you can then learn about Islam. So what is important is that as we face the challenges, the existential question of the survival of humanity in the 21st century because of the destruction that we have wrought upon this earth, we have to first transform the ummah to be the leading ummah to help shape through positive psychology for ourselves, our family, the, the ummah, the global world, so that we can be the leading ummah to bring humanity back to the path of Deenul Islam and at least respect this way of life, the Islamic way of life that is full of love, mercy, compassion. So I've given to you the understanding uh, earlier on in the last two videos on the fields of knowledge and the depth of knowledge which our great scholars uh, have given to us the legacy that they have left behind is mind-boggling. So it is so fantastic that for more than 1,000 years we have this wave of knowledge uh, from time to time to time and these are taught from teachers to students, teachers to students until uh, this era. But unfortunately a lot of these great teachers are gone and we are now left with a few teachers. For example, one of the great teachers is still alive is Sheikh Abdullah bin Bayah. He's already 85 years old. So you can imagine. But unfortunately, a lot of these great teachers, there is no technology those time to record. So Alhamdulillah, I am the student of the student of the student. I have very, very little knowledge, but I'm trying to record so that inshallah, if there's young people who have some understanding of Arabic, knowledge, some understanding of Sharia or Ilmu Tawheed or Ilmu Kalam, they can then uh, share this with their friends and then grow in terms of knowledge. Yeah? So I have given to you that in the Dinul Islam, we have three basic fundamental ideas in terms of Al-Ilahiyah, the theology, Al-Nabawiyah, the prophecy, and Al-Sama'iyah, the authentic report. Yeah? So what Al-Hiliyah contains is basically within the Ilmu Tawheed, Al-Mukallam, the 20 Sifa, and how we are going to defend ourselves against the atheists, materialists, against the panties, against the uh, panpsychists, against so many of the philosophers, all the newfangled ideas that is coming into uh, this world now. And they have all kinds of ideas about the nature of man, the nature of consciousness, the nature of existence, the nature of life, the nature of afterlife, which is not in consonant with the views of Islam. So we have this connection. Because we have from Nabawiyat, they receive revelation and then their authentic report of the realm of the Samaiyat give us an idea of what is life to be in the hereafter. Even though we cannot imagine, no eyes have seen heaven or hell, no ears have heard it. Uh, the joy of heaven you cannot even imagine. Because very basically you cannot imagine anything beyond the physical realm because that is the realm that we are living. All right? So we are living in this gross physical world. And we know that we are going to the subtle world and the rim of Akhirah, the rim beyond this physical world uh, in terms of the journey, the six stages or the seven stages from uh, our existence, from our pre-existence at the rim of Azal, uh, right? the rim of Alastum Birampikum to this dunya and then the rim of Barza and the rim that continues all the way until the Day of Judgment and the rim of Heaven and Hell. All those are the ideas that is being authentically reported because that knowledge cannot be just basically just the knowledge from the gross material atheistic world so we have the subtle world but now the atheistic world now is finding themselves big trouble because of the quantum world where it is reacting similar to the subtle world it's very subtle because wave quantum vacuum uh, is particulars all right no particle uh, Basically, they have a lot of many, many manifestations of the subtle realm that is 
within the quantum world can be analyzed. All right. So this is where Muslim physicists, Muslim quantum psych uh, psychiatrists, uh, Muslim quantum physicists, uh, Muslim uh, mathematicians, and so on, must be able to then bring this idea to a higher level, uh, which I've mentioned to you. Because within the realm of this knowledge, of revealed knowledge of Samaiya, our great teachers have understood that we live not only in a material world, but we live in a subtle world, the angelic world, the, uh, the world in which Allah manifested everything, that is the world of his sifa, all right? and then the world of the essential nature of Allah. All this is just representational. Remember, it's not one over another over another. No. Allah is the ultimate of everything. Allah encompasses everything. But Allah, you cannot say Allah is in this world or not outside this world. Because Allah's Zad is all encompassing. We can only have inference uh, using our language. Uh, that's why it's very important for Muslims when they understand this al Mutawhid, they are very careful with the language. Uh, they cannot say that Allah is up there. If Allah is up there, Ishtawa, that means He is going up and going down. That is a human. Uh, nature, but Allah uh, has all the attributes of encompassing everything and anything is within the realms of His will, and wherever that is manifested within of the His will, He you cannot say He is in because that becomes pantheistic. That means you say uh, Allah is in the cat or Allah is in so you are equivalenting. That's where Hinduism uh, takes this nature of. Uh, when they worship idols and so on, they say the God is in that idol. Alright, so this is where within al Tawheed we got to be very careful. That's why the great teachers of al Kalam they are very careful in terms of giving you the idea of the nature of the Sifa of Allah and how we don't try to represent Allah in His Zat. Right? For the realm of the essential, the realm of Ilahiyah, the Zat of Allah, we don't dwell into it because the moment you dwell into it, you can lead you to uh, kufur or can even lead to shirk. So that's why it's important for us to understand that all these are experiential because in the material world, when you have the experience beyond your physical world, for example, in the material world, you have some experience in the subtle world, for example, a dream world. You go to sleep and you dream, you have a beautiful dream. All right, you dream of meeting a teacher who brings you to a nice place where they are doing zikr and then that place is full with people who are smiling and happy. That is a dream. But that is a subtle world. Who brings you there? It is where, uh, from the realm of the angelic influence, it brings you there. But you have a bad dream. Dream in which uh, you, you dream of a, uh, of a ferocious tiger catching you and killing you. And then as you, the tiger was devouring you, you suddenly wake up. Alright? So that is a dream, different manifestation. Or you have a dream where you, you have a sexual relationship with a film star. That's even worse. That is satanic. So from the subtle world, you are having an input. So the dream world is a manifestation of the subtle world. Some idea, some inkling of what is going to be in the angelic realm and the higher world. Alright? So what is important is when we understand this, we must then bring up to understand that our reality is we human beings have four realms. Eh? That means this is the Al Ghazali's model. Inshallah, we understand that we have Allah infuse us with roh. All right. So when they ask you about the roh, tell them this is an amar, a command from you, uh, from Allah. So Allah tells us, and we have given you little knowledge, Khalil. So we have very little knowledge. Eh? So this is where the knowledge is not much. And we have the Kaab and the Akal. And this existed at, with us in the realm of the Azal, in the realm of the Allah Stabiru Bikum. Then we are given this understanding of becoming to this dunya, the Jasad, and the whole story unfolding with uh, this, uh, the creation of Adam as, as a Khalifa of Allah and so on. Uh, which uh, we have given you in our book, Post Islamic Psychology, the whole idea of understanding the nature of man. Eh? Uh, uh, first, understanding the creator and the created universe, then, understanding the nature of man, who we are in this chapter 2. Eh? So, if we understand that, we have our roh, our cup, our akal, and our body. So, our body exists in the terrestrial, that means the physical cross world. 
But we have the intermediate world or the subtle world, then we have the celestial world, then we have the infinite world. So you can see that so this is the level of our selfhood from body downward or upward. This is the level of reality from the terrestrial to the immediate, subtle to the angelic and beyond to the realm of the infinite, to the realm of the uh, Zat of Allah, which we are not going to describe, but at least we can describe the realm of the Sifatullah, the Sifat of Allah, of His love, His mercy, His, com His compassion. That's why we have uh, within our Islamic theology the understanding of Asmaul Husna, each Asmaul Husna giving us, for example, Allah tells us in the Quran, he is Ghafur, most forgiving Wadud, full of loving kindness. So Allah is the loving. So and Allah tells us. So we have forgiveness. So if we do a sin, even we do a sin as big as this, this earth, Allah will forgive us. So we know there is forgiveness. And there is love, mercy, compassion. Uh, there is also uh, Aziz. Uh, Allah is the Rafu, uh, Allah is the, uh, Aziz, uh, the the Almighty. Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth. So all these are the sifa of Allah in which we can then learn and we are given some small quantity of the sifa of Allah. That because we are the caliph of Allah, we are the observer in the quantum world, we then are given this idea of the infinite completeness of the perfect attributes of Allah. That means the, attribute, the attributes, we have condensed it to 20 sifa, but the 20 attributes of Allah cannot be defined because Allah has infinite positive attributes. So that is within Al Mutawhid. You must know we don't say, oh Allah has 20 sifa. No. 20 sifa is what we are used as a theological argument against the Greek, against the philosophers, against the atheists. These are the 20 core sifa as a way of we defending Al Mutawhid. But Allah has infinite qualities of all his sifa and some small qualities are given to us in terms of uh, within our roh, within our cup, within our cup, within our body. That's why we manifested some divine qualities within us in some small manner. And if you understand that, then we understand how the linkage, I'm trying to bring you back to the linkage of understanding, how within the framework of Islam, the beauty of Islam is that you have the knowledge of al ilahiyat we have the knowledge of an nabuwiyat we have the knowledge of a samaiyat bringing this closeness of the depth of knowledge, the ocean, the sea of truth and knowledge that if you study it, you will be drowned in it. Uh, you see great teachers one after another, one after another, one after another. Even you taste one little drop of this great shore of love, mercy and knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the nur and hidayah that Allah has given to our teachers and we have a little taste of it. Subhanallah we would then be so joyful understanding the purpose and meaning in our life to be the sincere servant of Allah, always striving to make ourselves good, helping others to be good and making the world good, inshaAllah.